In this video, we're going to learn about the dot product, which is the first of two vector products we will define. We're going to learn two different ways to compute the dot product, and once we have a sense and understanding of how to compute the dot product, we'll end by talking about what the dot product represents. So to start, defining the dot product, given vectors u being u1, u2, u3, and v being equal to v1, v2, v3, the dot product is a scalar value. Okay, so that means that the dot product gives us a numeric output, not a vector output. And that's really important. Okay, the dot product being a scalar value means that we take two vectors, we're going to combine them in a way to get a scalar output, a number. It is defined for vectors in any dimension. So we'll define it with vectors in three dimensions, but it could be easily translated for vectors in two dimensions or four dimensions or any higher dimensions beyond that. So the first way to compute the dot product, u dot v, is u1 v1 plus u2 times v2 plus u3 times v3. So it is the sum of the products of like components of each vector. So we multiply the x components together, the y components together, the z components together, and we find that sum. So let's look at putting that into practice. So find the dot product of the vectors u being equal to 2, negative 3, 4, and v being equal to 0, 6, 5. So the dot product u dotted with v is equal to 2 times 0 plus negative 3 times 6 plus 4 times 5. So u dotted with v is 0 minus 18 plus 20. So u dotted with v is equal to 2. So we started with two vectors. We combine them based off the first definition of the dot product, and we get an answer of 2. One thing about notation, we use that dot symbol for traditional multiplication, and now we're also using it for the dot product. The way we know the difference is on the left side, u and v are both vectors, so that dot is really important to pick up on to represent the dot product, whereas on the right side, we're just using that dot as a symbol for traditional multiplication. Okay, so make sure that we differentiate that uh, in our head. So now we have two more examples where we're asked to find the dot product. So I would like you to pause the video, try this on your own, see how you understand the first definition, and then check your answers. Okay, so hopefully you've completed both of these examples. So in the second example, find the dot product of the vectors a being equal to 3i minus j minus k, and b being equal to i plus 7j plus k. So a dotted with b is equal to 3 times 1 plus negative 1 times 7 plus negative 1 times 1. So a dot b is equal to 3 minus 7 minus 1. a dot b is equal to negative 5. And then the third example, find the dot product of the vectors u being equal to i minus 5j minus 2k and v being equal to i plus j minus 2k. So u dotted with v is equal to 1 times 1 plus negative 5 times 1 plus negative 2 times negative 2. So u dot v is equal to 1 minus 5 plus 4. So u dot v is equal to 0. And notice not a 0 vector, just the number 0. So if we look through these three examples quickly, we had a dot product that gave us a positive scalar, a dot product that gave us a negative scalar, and a dot product that gave us a scalar of zero. Okay? And again, as we work through this lesson, we eventually will understand what each of these dot products is telling us about the two vectors we started with. So now let's talk about some of the properties of the dot product. Right, being an operation like addition or subtraction, we now have this vector product that we have to define its properties. 
So let u and v and w be vectors and let c be a scalar. So the first property is that u dot v is equal to v dot u, right? So that means that the dot product is commutative, right? The order doesn't matter. Property number two, u dot the sum of v plus w can be written as u dot v plus u dot w, which means that the dot product is distributive over vector distributive over vector addition. C times the dot product u dot v is equal to either cu dotted with v or u dotted with cv. So that means that the scalar can distribute to either u or v before you do the dot product, or you can do the dot product and then scale it. In any of those cases, you will get the same output. Zero vector dotted with vector v. So if we have the dot product of two vectors, one of which is the zero vector, we will get a dot product of zero. Again, zero the scalar, not zero the vector. And then v dot v, so if we dot a vector with itself, then that's going to be equivalent to the magnitude of v squared. Right? And if you think about this, v dot v would be v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared. And the magnitude of v from our lesson on vectors was v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared. So I'm using the definition of v from the previous slide, where v was v1, v2, v3. So if we square that magnitude, we would get an expression that's equivalent to dotting a vector with itself. Right? And this is going to be helpful, uh, especially in some manipulations that we see throughout the course, right? this fact right here. Okay, so those are the five important properties of the dot product. The second way to compute the dot product is if theta is the angle between vectors u and v, then u dot v is equivalent to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of theta. Again, that's the angle between the two vectors. And we can see that visually here in our diagram. We have vector u, u vector v, and theta is that angle in between the two vectors. Okay, so here we don't necessarily need to know the components of the vector. We need to know what the magnitude of the two vectors are and this angle in between. Right, so we often refer to this as the geometric definition of the dot product. Now we are going to prove why this is the case. Uh, and I want to do that because the proof is quite nice. It relies on facts that we covered in both our vector video and some of the properties on the previous slide. Okay, so if we take our diagram, we have our vector u, we have our vector v. So I want to complete the triangle. So if I draw in this vector here, let's try that again. Okay, so right now I'm connecting the tip of two vectors, which doesn't work. That's not how vector addition works. So if I negate one of these vectors, so let's say we take negative v, which would be that vector there. So then negative v plus u would give us the vector that we drew to complete the triangle. So this vector u minus v, right? Instead of negative v plus u, we'll write it as just a more traditional subtraction. Okay, so now we have a triangle with an angle and three sides. And one of the theorems or the laws that we learned about is the law of cosines relating the three sides and the angle of a triangle. Okay, so if we recall, the law of cosines was the side across from the angle squared equaling to side squared plus side squared minus two times side times side times cosine of the angle in between. Okay, so writing that out in terms of these vectors. Now, vectors aren't numbers, but law of cosines would require numbers. So we're going to turn everything into a magnitude. Right, if this side is vector u, then the length of this side would be the magnitude of u. And then it follows for the other two sides of the triangle. Okay, so by the law of cosines. OK, 
Okay, so we have magnitude of u minus v squared. That's the side across from the angle. That's the length of the side. And then magnitude of u squared, length of one side, plus magnitude of v squared. Could be negative v, but magnitude won't uh, matter there, right? v and negative v will have the same magnitude. Minus 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of theta. Okay, so this is a good start, but we need simplifications. We need to create a dot product somewhere in this so that we can create this definition that we see at the top of the page. Okay, so our next step is going to be reversing one of the properties. So we said any vector dotted with itself is equivalent to the square of its magnitude. So let's go backwards. We have the square of magnitudes, three different places here. So that means that this is u minus v dot u minus v. And that's equal to u dot u plus v dot v minus 2 magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta. Okay, so law of cosines, we use some magnitude and vector addition from our previous video, and now we use one of the properties on the previous slide. Now, the next property we're going to call upon is the fact that the dot product is distributive. So on the left-hand side here, we can expand that to u dot u, and then u dot negative v, so I'll pull the negative out, so minus u dot v, and then negative v dot u, so minus v dot u and negative v dot negative v since they're both negative i'll turn that into plus v dot v and that equals the right hand side of u dot u plus v dot v minus 2 magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta okay so now if we compare the left and the right hand side of our work here u dot u and u dot u would simplify out of this equation. v dot v and v dot v would simplify from both sides. And then here, if we compare these, remember now the third property we're calling upon is the fact that the dot product is commutative. So u dot v and v dot u are the same. Right? So these really are the same. So that means we have negative 2 times u dot v which is equal to negative 2 magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta, which simplifying by dividing negative 2 from both sides of the equation, we get u dot v equals magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta. So there we just proved with law of cosines, vector addition, and the properties of the dot product, that u dot v is equivalent to magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine theta, which gives us the second way to compute the dot product of two vectors. So now using that definition, find a dot b if magnitude of a equals 2, magnitude of b equals 5, and the angle between them is pi over 3. So a dot b is going to be magnitude of a, which is 2, times the magnitude of b, which is 5, times the cosine of the angle between them, which is cosine of pi over 3. So we do need to remember our trig facts here. So 2 times 5 times cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So a dot b is equal to 5. Now the nice part about this second definition for the dot product is we can also use it to find the angle between the two vectors. So if we have the vectors in component form or have information about the two vectors, we can plug in to that definition and find theta instead of finding a dot b or u dot v based on this question, the vectors being u and v. Okay, so find the exact angle between vector u being 2, negative 3, 4 and v being 0, 6, 5. So these are two vectors we used earlier just to save us a little bit of work. If you go back to the first slide, you'll see that the dot product of these two vectors is 2. Now I know it wouldn't be too hard for us to compute that again, 
but it saves us a little bit of work. So now the definition right, is u dot v equals magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine theta. So we have the dot product. If we can find the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, then we can plug all of that information in and solve for theta. So magnitude of u is the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. So magnitude of u is the square root of 4 plus 9 plus 16. So the magnitude of u is the square root of 29. Magnitude of v, square root of 0 squared plus 6 squared plus 5 squared. So magnitude of v is the square root of 0 plus 36 plus 25. So magnitude of v is the square root of 61. Okay, so changing colors, let's put all that information in. So 2 equals the square root of 29 times the square root of 61 times cosine of theta. And if we're looking for the exact angle, it will be term in terms of an inverse trig, in this case, inverse cosine. So we'll start by dividing. So 2 divided by square root of 29 square root of 61 equals cosine theta. We can combine these, but there's not really a need to since we're leaving it in exact terms anyway. So then solving for our angle, theta is going to be equal to inverse cosine or arc cosine of 2 over square root of 29 times the square root of 61. And if we wanted an actual value or an approximate value, we would use a calculator, uh, plug that in, and get our value. Okay, so now that we've looked at the two ways to compute the dot product, let's put a little meaning behind it, what it represents and what it can tell us about two vectors. Okay, so just a reminder, the two ways that we have to compute the dot product, so u dot v is equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3, or u dot v is equal to magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine theta. Those are our two definitions. Okay, so the vectors u and v are orthogonal, which is a word we're going to use in this course to mean perpendicular. If u dot v is. Okay, well, if two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular, that means that theta equals pi over 2, right, or 90 degrees. So if we look at the second definition, if theta is pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0 which makes the whole right side of this zero, which means that u dot v would be equal to zero. So in that third example on the first page, when we got the dot product of the two vectors to be zero, that meant that those two vectors were orthogonal, right? If we were to draw them in three space, there would be a right angle between them. Now let's talk a little bit about maximum and minimum values of the dot product. So the maximum value of the dot product occurs when u and v point in the, okay, so if we look at the second definition again, the largest that cosine theta will ever be, right, is 1. Cosine theta ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. So the largest it's ever going to be is 1. And when is cosine equal to 1? That happens when theta equals 0. And when theta equals 0, right, so 1 when theta equals 0. Now that means if the angle between the two vectors is 0, the vectors point in the same direction. And then on the other side, the minimum value that cosine will ever reach is negative 1 which occurs when theta is equal to pi. And if the angle between the two vectors is pi, that means that the two vectors point in opposite directions. Okay, so when we're talking about the dot product, the largest value we'll ever get 
is when the two vectors are going in the same direction. They don't have to be the same vector, just pointing in the same direction. So for instance, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2 would be an example. The lowest value or the minimum value we'd ever get is when the two vectors point in opposite directions. So like 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. The angle between u and v will be acute, right? So less than pi over 2. If the dot product is positive, Because, again, back to this cosine, cosine is positive in quadrant 1. That means angle would be acute. And then it'll be obtuse if the dot product is negative. Right? Any angle between pi over 2 and pi, cosine will be negative. And remember, just important to point out, I'm skipping over it, magnitudes are always positive. Right? Their length, their measure of distance. So really the, sim the sine of the dot product will only rely on the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Okay. And the last piece for this video is that it can be helpful to think about the dot product as measuring how much the two vectors point in the same direction. Right? So a positive dot product tells us that our vectors are kind of pointing in the same direction. Okay how close we can really dive into all of these pieces that we wrote above. The dot product negative, being negative, means the vectors point in more or less opposite directions. And then the dot product being zero tells us that the two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular. Okay, so two ways to define the dot product and then ending with a little bit of meaning. And it's gonna take a little bit of time to comprehend this. You're gonna need to go back to this but the dot product is the first of two vector products that we will define.